and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Mountain Diana. Let's bring this deck back. I know we only played it two days ago, but it's Rank Up Sunday. This is where we play some of the best decks that we played throughout the week. And currently, this is my favorite deck to rank up with. I really like this deck. So what I like about it is I like the low curve. We have 24 cards that cost either one or two mana. That's 60% of our deck costs either one or two mana. So we're not getting run over by the aggressive decks because we are, you know, we have a really low curve. And as you can tell, basically the rest of our deck costs three mana. We only have eight cards, so 25% of the deck that doesn't cost one, two, or three mana. So we're able to stay with the early decks with having a low curve. But then with all of these cards that invoke, we have, um, you know, like our, our priestesses, our spacey sketcher also finds us something else really cheap and really good to play. And then our, our star shapings with all this invoke, we're able to um, have a really good late game as well. And then we have the Aurelian soul at the top end. That's just a, a huge finisher. That's hard to beat. Um, so yeah, so I really, that's what I really like about this deck is, is we get to play um, the early game. We get to play a bunch of cheap stuff, but then also have a great late game. Of course, Mountain Scryers invoking as well. Um, so that's what our deck's about. We're splashing uh, Shadow Isles just for two cards for Unspeakable Horror with that Nightfall with Diana and also Stalking Shadows so we can get extra copies of all of our Invoke stuff um, or get like an ephemeral copy of something maybe we don't really need and then we just discard it to Spacey Sketcher. Um, you know, so we got those two cards. Um, as, as I was talking about before, whenever we're playing this, this deck, this is a... Um, it's called Mountain Diana because of Mountain Scryer because we're going Targon Allegiance with Mountain Scryer. Uh, some people play this deck with just Diana and Leona. I would say that's that's what basically everybody else does, is play this deck with Diana and Leona and then play a couple Robins. And basically, I just think that the power Aurelian Soul is too powerful not to play. And Leona and Robin are... They're fine. They're just... They're fine. But they're, they're really interchangeable with any other four and five mana cards that we're going to be invoking anyway. And they're, they're nothing special. And so when you have a finite number of champion slots that uh, I think we got to play the best one there with Aurelian Soul and just don't really need to focus on Leona and Diana. All right, so there we go. So this is uh, our Mountain Diana deck. We're going to go play our five games in ranked, and we're going to see how we do. Uh, Crazy Killer says, how would you tweak Daybreak if you could? To me, it seems like good on paper, but a flop in practice versus mo most decks. So the... Okay. So Daybreak's a good a good mechanic, just like Nightfall. But Nightfall does have like twice as... I don't know about twice, but they have a, a lot more Nightfall cards because it's split between two regions than Daybreak. You really don't have very many Daybreak cards to, to possibly play. But then I honestly just think Leona is just pretty meh as like a, as like a Daybreak champion. Like, I think Diana's kind of a better card and it costs two mana as opposed to Leona at four mana. Like, Leona just stuns one thing. You play another Daybreak, you stun one thing. Like, that's just not even that special. That's not even that good. Where Diana can be really large, be quick attack. You know, can, you know, like, there's a lot of times you have, like, nine power Dianas, and it has quick attack, it has challenger, so Diana's being removal. Um, yeah, like, it, all that stuff's happening, where Leona just keeps one thing from attacking or blocking for one turn. All right, let's mulligan our four and five mana cards. Let's look for some more cheap stuff. There we go. Perfect. Our Duskbringer can create that dust, and then we can discard that dust to invoke something else. They forced us to choose death or the blade. Daybreak as a mechanic is not bad. No, I'm not saying that Daybreak is bad as a mechanic. I'm just saying the payoff for Daybreak no being Leona is not nearly as good as the payoff of Nightfall being Diana and Nocturne. No, our, our win cause not just survive until Aurelian Soul, but it's kind of just use the invoke cards. I mean, that could be Aurelian Soul, could just be the cards that we're just invoking in general. We're going to have some really powerful invoke stuff. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm going to take the Meteor Shower that can kill Zed at Lucian. Maybe I should be taking the Warrior. There's a chill in the air. Um, charge? Back heretic. 
magic. Good card to play, too. I'm gonna play that on defense, though. Oh, Take the messenger. Yeah. That's a pretty sparkle fly. Get a card, draw card. New recruit reporting in. Ill met by moonlight. You're late. You're early. I cannot turn back. Face your heretic. So Senna is going to turn into a 5-3 double attack. I do have the 1-1 one, one that can just block it right now. So that's very good. And if they would have tried to like single combat and kill something out of the Phil Cascade. But now if we get prior... So like if they attack, I have this thing that can block it. If we get priority, we can use the Meteor Shower. That's annoying. So 4 and 1... Screeching Dragon's going to be annoying. Doing one damage to the dragon. These things are whatever. I just don't, don't really care about them. Honestly, maybe I should just be playing the Shield Bearer first. Instead of this Meteor Shower. Where the Shield Bearer would be like a 3-6. They could just even block the Senna and trade with the Senna. Yeah, I, I kind of played that too fast. My and too Furious. Rains. I do think I should have just played Shield Bearer. The bad news is they have this really cool dragon that's doing a bunch of stuff. Good news is that's kind of all they got. My We're going to have enough units. We have so much card advantage. We're going to have enough units that we can just throw units in front of this screeching dragon all day. Who does not know the name, Sentinels of light don't fear the dark. We were peaceful once. All right, pass turn. Yeah, we could just block all day. That's where we're getting to a problem. Now we're getting into a problem. That card's more difficult to deal with. And kills me much faster. My gun does the talking. I demand satisfaction. Go ahead, scare me. They follow the wrong master. Um, charge? Hardly fair. Aha! We go as one. You cannot hold us down. Alright, let's kill the dragon. Unfortunately, the Traveler is going to go back to 4 mana with the Mountain Scryer dying. We are not able to play that this turn. Hmm. All unbelievers will see the light. What's up, Aurelian Soul? 
Now they see who I truly am. Ah. <clears throat> Alright, well again... We can throw bodies in front of this dragon all day. I guess, let's see. Yeah, it's it's gotta be Zed. No! This is really bad. That's me taking 10 right now. That could definitely be bad. I guess I wish I would've just played more bodies out. Yep, that's game. Purity and peace. Last deny. Zed. That was all going to be just fine until that Zed. The game that I messed that up was that game with the, the deal four and deal one. Um, that that card, I really messed up that turn. There was just no reason for me to play that uh, invoke card that was the deal four, deal one. I should have just played the three six as the blocker. Save that. We could have had that late, af you know, like later and afterwards. That's where I messed that game up. Okay. Normally we keep one mana cards. They're not super valuable in this matchup. We were peaceful once. It's our time. All right, they'll be able to take out a trundle. Darn, I was hoping they were going to... I was hoping they were gonna pass priority and wait for me to attack and then play the... Um, and then afterwards play the ramp spell because I just wasn't gonna attack, of course. The trolls are going to war! All right, one trundle down. Her flowers bring the moonlight with them. Hmm. Nothing special here. The scourge. Um. The scourge can be really, really powerful. In the late game, that's kind of what we need, I think. Cards that have the ability to be very, very powerful. Chosen of the moon, we open our hearts to her gentle light. Night descends. I will be heard. Great hand for them, though. Turn three ramp, then turn four trundle, turn five trundle. You know, having double trundle. That is pretty awesome. These cards are not good. Yeah, we don't, don't need any of these. I know these paths well. Back heretic. Not really planning on playing any of those. Have faith. Wow. Wow. They're gonna have turn six Aurelian Soul after having turn turn four Trundle, turn five Trundle, turn... Oh, no, 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 that's turn seven, I guess. It's turn seven Aurelian Soul, but still. Ugh. I guess it's turn seven. Yeah. In her radiant blessing. I'm gonna make a you sickle. <laughs> One troll to rule them all. Yeah, they have the ideal hand for sure. Come, a new phase awaits. A young Rakor once gazed upon these stars. Wow. 
What will you have? So yeah, Weirding Stones doesn't matter. So if I kill Weirding Stones, they're going to have 10 mana next turn. If I don't kill Weirding Stones, they're going to have 10 mana next turn. So Weirding Stones doesn't matter. The Trundle level up hurts because I was going to be able to challenge and Unspeakable Horror that thing. I don't mind them having like the yeah I just want to get like I just thought the attacking is better than not attacking but I I don't mind them having all this stuff out here because they're going to just run out of room they can only have six things so that's why I didn't kill the, the tavern keeper so I would I want them to run out of room so that's my thinking there Sunlight guide you, my brethren. Come on in. No really in soul. Nope. Still a really in soul. Oh, the scourge? That's way worse. That is way worse for me than Aurelian Soul. Weird that they played something that's actually better than Aurelian Soul. Bless the faithful and fear the heretics. Uh, my plan is play this, play Priestess, look for another removal spell. Sunlight blind, while moonlight oh, maybe I should take an Equinox and just. I should, yeah, I should take an Equinox, shouldn't I? I don't know, it's tough not to take that card. The card's pretty good. Yeah, maybe I should have taken the silence on the scourge. I don't know, getting everything plus two plus two for the whole game. This one's on the house. How about another round? Uh, Lucian Overwhelm used Noxus. Down to six. Believe or burn. Don't really know why these aren't attacking. Yeah, Pirate Aggro, Noxious Bilgewater, that deck's very good. That deck's very, very good. Hopefully, no Ice Quake. Hopefully, we get to just level this up. Okay, so they're going to have their own leveled up Aurelian Soul. Aurelian Soul Battle.
So we start with without my attention. Start here, let's remove the spell shield. So then I can start with the supernova. Let's have priority first. Frostbite midrange is really, really effective against all the least index. I do love an audience. It's not the most aggressive against the the misfortune. It's not the most. It's not like the best against like the misfortune gangplank decks. Um, yeah, there we go. GGs. We got it. But yesterday we See went 5-0 with time, um, with that deck yesterday, mid-range frostbite. Pulling strike takes down Lee Sin. Alright, we got an aggressive deck here. Fizz is elusive. I don't know if they'll have too much other elusives. I'm gonna keep the star shaping. Usually we would mulligan it, but against like an, an aggro deck like this, then maybe I need this heal five. If I was, okay, like let's say the rest of my hand wasn't very good and I was gonna be mulliganing a lot, I wouldn't keep the star shaping. But I, you know, I already have a couple of twos that are good. Especially this deck that's filled with one one and two mana cards. I think it's okay to keep a more expensive card like star shaping. Cold shots. We were peaceful once. Trick shot. We will resist. Scratched. And now I'm I'm wait I'm waiting on Diana until I see Fizz, right? Like that's what I want. I want to be able to take out Fizz with Diana. My faith protects me. I don't love playing this on an offensive turn. The sun rock got me good. Discarding Jinx. That must be a hand filled with other Jinxes and top end cards. Discarded Jinx. A game. Go on then. Oh, or okay, actually the Jinx could have been you're right, they played Pool Shark last turn, so that Jinx could have been the ephemeral card from the Pool Shark. Fleeting, whatever, the fleeting card. Watch this. You Go on then. By playing the two drop last turn. The sea beasts will fear us. We get to double spell with these. Alright, there's Fizz. Their scent travels in the night air. Find your own light within the darkness. Yours is a light I cherish, Moon Sister. Diana's a very good at challenger. Quick attack challenge. Two mana. Very good challenger. Okay. They had they had their two mystic shots. This stays alive for now. Can't win them all, eh? This Dusk Rider is going to be big. It's going to be a six-five. I can play this turn five as a six-five fearsome. It's pretty big. The strong don't want mercy. Temperamental as moonlight. Wanna see a trick? Pretty good trick. 
<sighs> All right, let's see. Minari, rise. Yeah. Thank you, a looker. I'm gonna go with Scryer and Shadows this turn. Stands for Jace. Um. Yeah. Targon's history is should have done that first. Star. The serpent. Good card taking down Fizz. A five mana six five fearsome. Nothing wrong with that. This is scary. Now it's a party. Double Jagged Taskmaster. Definitely should have just played my Mountain Scryer first. Would have been able to challenge this Fizz. It's possible those are both units, and then they don't have a spell, but then if that's the case... Okay, I was going to say, if that's the case... You know, as far as giving that elusive, then they would just play their two units and get the Super Mega Death Rocket. Um... gonna take all but four mana. I don't think Stalking Shadows... Well, I guess Stalking Shadows could grab... We have... Do we have the Nightfall Elusive? Do we have that card in here? Mountain Diana. No, no Nightfall Elusive. So there's nothing really to grab with that. Longtooth's gonna be a problem also. Oh man, another Jagged Taskmaster? Ugh. So I definitely have to lead with the Meteor Shower and kill Jinx first. So that was a good, really good turn for my opponent. Let's see if we can uh, still stay alive. It's a good draw. So we have to start here. I'm glad I didn't take the thing that had the 3 plus power. Really? <laughs> Get excited? Come on. The serpent rises, poised to strike. Do I maybe kill the the daring Poro? 
man, it's risky, but I, I could kill the Daring Poro, and then maybe, like, if they just draw a unit, they won't be able to give Fizz Elusive. It's quite risky. But that's probably what I have to do, because, right, like, if I kill Fizz, let's say I kill Fizz, then they have four Elusive here, and then this thing overwhelms over this thing for another four damage. That's eight damage right there, and I can't, I can't heal up to eight anyway. So I, I think if I do the fizz, I just, I'm, I'm dead on board. So I guess we go with the risk. Because yeah, if I grab fizz, I just die to the open attack. Oh, this is still lethal? Still seven? Ugh. Oh, they had it. They drew a spell. Give that thing elusive. All right, what do we get? Refill our mana. Reduce the cost of something. Are there any like burst? Are there any like burst spells that help save me? I mean, the silence is slow. I can't silence the shark, it's slow. Legends of Moonlight are the only burst celestials. Well, GG's good, good looking deck there. So it kind of feels like with this hand, with this deck, is that it forces like with having all these early cards and then also having the amazing invoke late game, we're really fo ah, forcing the opponent to have their best hands their best curves like stuff like that like um you know like they need to really have like their champions like on curve and good spells to protect them and good interaction and a lot of damage and be really aggressive like they have to have all that things and those those are both of our losses or those kind of things happening Yeah, I guess killing the Darapora wasn't didn't really matter because we were either way we died to the open attack. Even with killing the Daring Poro, I still had enough overwhelm to do seven to me. Stalking Shadows is a good Nightfall enabler. Playing this thing down to make it a little bit more difficult to attack. They still can. Eye of the Dragon would be a 3-5. We'd be able to take down Eye of the Dragon with Pale Cascade.
I'm going to take out the Mentor of the Stones. Punish transgressions. Face your heretic. So this is basically four mana invoke, which isn't great. But obviously that's that's not bad in the late game, like if you need it and you want to play it like as a blocker and stuff. Um, but we can also, with our Spacey Sketcher, we can just discard it and invoke instead. Force is meaningless without skill. A pleasure to see you, Master. I'll just pass for now. That's a good card. That's a really good card. Is all in the mind. They may just pass back. I should have played the Spacey Sketcher. Yeah, because this only hush, cascade, cascade costs seven. I should have played Spacey Sketcher. So they pass. I they only lose one mana, and I lose five mana. They should pass. My patience wanes. Yep, that was bad by me. gonna grab this great beyond the other two cards don't seem to do a lot besides turn on nightfall one star's whoopsie is another spark again these don't really seem to do a whole lot I need two hush for that thing. They discard the other Zenith Blade? I guess they did, right? I guess I was expecting them to discard a gem, but I guess they discarded another Zenith Blade. Yeah, they did. Kept all the gems. They're both regular Pale Cascades, no Dianas in hand. This works. Hush is a problem for the all in at least in deck. Hush is a problem. All right. Nimble and quick, the trickster is. 
We could definitely see another Lee Sin being in hand. And they are going to try again. I can see that. Yeah, Hush is just too good of a card not to be playing. Just in general. And here's where I'd paint my constellation. You're sad they're nerfing Huff? Hush. Looks like the most likely thing is just is Hush is going to be like the fleeting copy cost four. That's what it looks like the nerf's going to be. That's a lot of mana they're not using. I only wasted one mana there. They wasted eight. It's not like my attack's that amazing anyway. I do three, whatever. Bask in her radiant blessing. Definitely love having two Mountain Scryers and having these things cost two less. Hmm. Six mana? in cycles. Someday we will be one. Breathe in, breathe well played one celestial card this game. It's a surprise. Now that's two. Lee Sin's their only champion. This is probably another good end turn. I don't know. I mean, we can end turn again, but now we're talking about a huge, huge chunk of damage that we're dealing with now. Gonna make, we'll make the attack. All right, they're down to one. I taste purple. Being very careful. Yeah, that was for last time. Yeah, could have gone for lethal with Pale Cascade. I definitely think they would have done stuff if I would have gone for lethal with Pale Cascade. So I just didn't think it was too necessary. And I, I thought that if they don't do anything and they go down to one, I'm happy with that. And that's where we're at. I'm happy with them being down at one. Clear your head. Let your instinct speak. So if they go immediately to attack, my unspeakable horror will not create a random Nightfall card unless I do like Hush or something like that. Now, I do want to turn on Nightfall. All right. GGs. Three and two. Cause yeah, I don't know what the best case scenario for them is. Like they gained some amount of life with attacking with that thing, but then I still have my ten power elusive with spell shield. Yeah, the invoke animation's a little slow. Uh 
Okay. We're gonna keep our hand, I guess. I mean, if we try mulliganing, we'll be unsuccessful. I fight with my spirit, not my fists. That thing's not that important to kill, alright? Alright, so either take the warrior that can challenge both Lee Sin and Heimerdinger pretty successfully, or we take this written in stars and try to draw... I'm just gonna take the warrior. I don't want to just, like, spend a, a card to draw. We already have- we have too much draw. I was say we can have Aurelian Soul a turn earlier, but that doesn't matter. We could get a 4-4 Diana, but then we're spending 4 mana for that. Like, I don't want to- I just don't want to spend the 4 mana on that. Yeah, the thing- I mean... Fewer dragons did do bad, but I would be, I mean, a lot of things went wrong for us in those games. I would be very confident in replaying fewer dragons and going 4-1 the next time. I think that's just kind of how those games went. Um. That's how it goes sometimes. Maybe I should have taken the 0 mana 2 1, because the good part about playing the 0 mana 2 1 is then I'd be able to play the. Um, the warrior afterwards. Key Guardian. Key Guardian on a champion. Force is meaningless without skill. A pleasure to see you, Master. It's a meteor shower. I'll see this through. Strike firm. Center your spirit. Cool. I like that challenge. Glad they weren't challenging my five five. So you can play two spells to cancel this out. <clears throat> Conflict is all in the mind. Cool. Now they don't now they can't have a barrier for the warrior. Annoying. What 
What is gained when we return malevolence? Man, our deck has so many cards all the time. This is a this is a difficult deck to play because we just have infinite cards at all times. So we're at two out of four. Could save that. I'm not that worried about my life total right now. I will not hold back. Unyielding light. I'll play one of these things. What's up, Balding Yeti? My lands need me. The learning curve is not much at all. Coming over from rune coming over from magic to rune terror, you're gonna pick it up right away. It plays swing. a lot like magic. You know, some of the rules are different. You're gonna have to, you know, kind of learn like the the sequencing and like the the timing of like when when you're playing stuff and everything. Um, but no, it's not not bad at all. Um, I felt pretty confident playing in the game in just a week, maybe, maybe less. Uh, let's see. And it's. So I'm going falling comment. The mountain knows me. I am the traveler. It's really get it's really easy to get into from just a um from just a card acquiring standpoint as well. Card acquisition standpoint. Especially when compared to like magic and stuff, you can dragon spirit awakens. You can definitely earn earn cards, earn decks pretty quickly. There has been two sets that have come out since I started, but I I had all of the cards in about six weeks from whenever like every single card from about uh, from like the other. But there are there have been two smaller sets since then. I know a lot of people have just been playing. A lot of people in chat have been just been playing for like a couple of months and have everything without spending money. All right, nine mana. Sarsa. That's a lot of mana. You'd think I'd have something better to do than what I have. Conflict is all in the mind. What would you divine from my stars? Yours is the light that guides all travelers onward. We're going to be doing some obliterating. You're welcome, Balding Eddie. Yeah, I understand that. Like, paper, paper magic's amazing. And yeah, I understand that. Yeah, feeling a little off on Arena. Um, yeah, give us a try. You can play this on your phone, too. Answers. Is a very big plus. So I'm thinking maybe they have like one deny. I hope they don't have two denies, but I'm thinking they maybe have a deny, and so I'm going to try the falling comet, try to get a deny out of their hand. Still have the mana for supernova. Conflict is all in the mind. I was hoping they don't have a second deny. And of course, I got to do this immediately before our, in our invoke bonus gets goes away. There we go. All right, we'll take that. So Lee send down. Heimerdinger down. It cannot hide. Okay, so we're gonna block here, block here, block here. Block here. This game has this eye that you can always use your cursor and move it over and you see what happens in combat. That's pretty nice. So we're gonna be going down to 15. We keeping this 3-4 alive, those will trade. With this game, Balding Yeti, things attack <coughs> in rows. Like, you can only have six things out in play, and you can only attack with six things. And you just, it's only single attacking and blocking. 
But then, like, my 3-4 just blocks the 3-3. The three, three, or 3-2 or something like that. But anyway, so now my 3-4 is just a 3-1 now for the rest of the game. And, you know, we can heal it and stuff, but... Like, like the... Because it's just single attacking and blocking, things don't regenerate. Uh, let's see. Let's go with the warrior. <laughs> yeah, Heimerdinger. That's one of their champions. And it, it is best of one, but you get to know what your... You can see what, what your opponent's champions are and what regions they're playing, so you get to tell what they're playing. <clears throat> So it makes your mulligan decisions really good. So it doesn't feel like it needs to be a best of three game at all. There hasn't been like any time that playing this game that where I've been like, man, I wish this was best of three. Uh, let's see. So we could pass. Don't really want to pass. Let's just go with the stalking shadows to use a couple mana. Use a little bit of mana. Force is meaningless without skill. All right, they got another Lee Santa. We can almost take down that Lee Sin. It's a 4-5. Almost. I think I'm going to take out this Eye of the Dragon. No, going for Lee Sin with Unspeakable Horror. I know. Our deck has infinite value. Yeah, that, that is really cool with the mana that you get to bank three total for spells. So it's not just whoever curves out, like who plays their one drop, two drop, three drop, you can't catch up, because you can catch up because you get the little bit extra mana if you don't if you don't use it on turn one. This game is too Two real late game decks playing against each other, and you can see like we're just <laughs> we're deep into the game and not running out of stuff at all. Conflict is all in the mind. My lands need prepare yourself. Let's me down to ten. Bask in her radiant blessing. Of course, I, I have to worry about like all they have to do is play any spell and give this thing a barrier. So I have to be worried about that as far as the unspeakable horror is concerned. Alright, we're going to get a lifesteal unit in and an elusive unit. So it's basically lifelink and flying. Kind of. Yeah, this has so many options, right? Like, all of these turns that I've had, we could have gone so many ways. I'm not saying that my, my turns are the absolute best or anything. I mean, well... It, there's no way my turns are the absolute best. But, you know, we're doing... I'm trying. Yeah, the options are, are there for sure. So it's gonna be their second spell, so I the dragon will make a dragling. Diana! Hello, hello. So I have 11 mana. 
So if we go five on the warrior. So yeah, you can only go six across. So you see, like, I, I had to just obliterate one of my units to play another unit. I should just unspeakable horde in response to that will of Ionia make them play two other things. <sighs> yeah, that's what I should have done. So this forces them. I don't know. I don't know if this is going to work. I think it does. I think it will now. Okay, good. All right, got Lee Sin out of here. Good. So could play that as a 2-3 elusive. I'll just wait and have seven mana so I can go star shaping and still have seven mana. All right, good. Let's clear up some stuff. I like it. You cannot sway me. You are beneath me. Fall, Just take him one damage. Gain four from the Golden Sister. Take five from this. Oh, we missed the Allegiance on Mountain Scryer. That's the first time playing this deck that I've ever missed the Allegiance. So it is possible. Anything is possible. It is possible. All right, it's great. The Scrape Beyond is going to be very large elusive. <laughs> it's going to be a very large elusive. Doing 11 damage to Diana. All right, I think 11 is going to kill Diana. All right, so I I was passing. I didn't want to play the Shade Stalker first. Uh, I didn't want to play the Shade Stalker because I kind of want to. I wanted to wait with my leveled up Diana to play the Nightfall card, give Diana Challenger. All right, so a 17-8 spell shield elusive. No. Ugh, they just have a blocker now. And I can't stop that thing from blocking. Evening glows. Yeah, I can't stop that thing from blocking. It will make my great beyond in eighteen eight, though. It's too late for you. Wow. Oh, gets rid of the spell shield. Whew, thankfully. Okay. Right. Well, that just got rid of the spell shield. That's it. So that's fine. Nice. Do it, Balding Eddie. And if you got questions, feel free to you know hit me up in Discord and stuff. If you got any questions? 
I'll have, after this game, I'll talk about some pointers. Uh, after we finish this game. Give you a little... All right, GG's. That's gonna do it. Three and two. <laughs> yeah, that is not the typical game. <laughs> I would not say. All right, but there we go. This invoke stuff. I mean, you can just see the the late game that we have here. We have with Lunari Priestess, Solari Priestess, Mountain Scryer, getting all those invoke cards. Stalking Shadows, giving you multiple copies of those things. It is crazy. Like we weren't even using our star shaping. We didn't even have our Aurelian Soul. We weren't even using our star shaping and getting those Celestials until the very end. Um, so yeah, like this this deck, as you just saw there, can play the longest of long games, but still we have 60% of our cards that cost one or two mana, 75% of our cards that cost one, two, or three mana. So we're still able to hold off the early decks. We have Hush, which is like the best interaction spell, as we saw in that, that game. So we have like probably the best, the most powerful interaction spell in the game. Super low curve. Um and still the best late game <laughs> that you can have. So this deck kind of has it all. So I really like this deck. Both of our losses, our opponents had amazing hands and you just give it up to them, you know? Like it, it, that's what I think it kind of takes to beat this deck is you have to have an amazing hand with a lot of pressure, with a lot of power, with like powerful champions and stuff like that. Um, that's, what it, that's what it really takes. Because you definitely seem like you have to go underneath it unless you're playing your own Aurelian Soul deck. Um, All right, but that's it. That's Mountain Diana. This is there's so much decisions to make with this deck. It's a lot of fun to play. This is probably my favorite deck to be playing off stream because yeah, you just get to like the amount of decisions you get to make is is crazy and all the thought going in. And so if, if that's the kind of games that you like playing, um, you like really controlling the, everything. Uh, give this deck a try. Let me know how it goes. Leave those comments for those y'all on YouTube. I want to hear I want that feedback. I want to hear how this deck's going for you. But anyway, that's it here for Mountain Diana. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.